Hi, everyone. So, uh, pleasure to be here. And um, I'm going to talk about uh, LLMs and inferencing LLMs on Kubeflow. And along with me, I have uh, Chamot Pereira, who's a CNCF ambassador, as well as a software engineer for Circles. And I'm Suresh. And um, I'm a co-founder of InfoWaves and Articom. Uh, we are specializing in terms of generative AI and uh, large language models and agentic AI. Right. So uh, these are the topics that I'll be that we'll be covering throughout the entire session, and we'll be talking about the LLM challenges as well as a running example based on our case study and the foundation and uh, the serving layer, uh, the case of aspects and scaling automation. So these are the topics we are going to uh, talk about throughout the whole session today. Right, so first of all, uh, let me talk about some real world problem that, that is there in terms of inferencing LLMs, right? So um, one thing is that, okay, we have two types of large language models. We have the cloud-based models, which is driven by these popular companies like Google, Azure, and um, even um, open AI, right? There are a lot of cloud-based models that we can make a simple API call and we can retrieve the information and um, where we can do any sort of integrations with um, agent DK applications as well as uh, with, along with uh, many other in, in, um, applications. But in terms of large language models, we have certain challenges in terms of the real business scenario, right? Based on our experience and based on the feedback we have received from the clients, these are some of the challenges we have uh, we have found out first thing is the bursting compute demand right so we all know that when it comes to a real large language model it utilizes the power of a gpu right so there has to be a proper way of inferencing these sort of large language models to make sure that these are scaling on demand that's challenge number one so we found out okay kubeflow would be the perfect challenge perfect application for for this this sort of uh, use cases so uh, that's number one uh, point number two, latency sensitivity. Uh, so uh, let me give a very nutshell idea about what we do, uh, basically. So we run a customer support automation platform. Uh, there we are very sensitive about the latencies of the responses, right? And based on the demand, based on the number of customers you're serving, it has to scale rapidly. So it's very sensitive topic, basically, right? So for an example, uh, in our scenario, like I said, chatbots and voice agents, they require high latency uh, sorry, low latency, uh, you know, throughputs when it comes to uh, serving these sort of uh, workloads. Point number three, privacy. So uh, when we're talking to clients, actually, uh, especially the big corporates, the large scale corporates, even though these sort of cloud APIs are available, even though these cloud models are available, they still prefer to go with um, privately hosted LLMs, such as open um, the open source LLMs, such as Gemma, uh, Llama 3, Llama 4, right? things like that because of the privacy aspects. So they prefer hosting these LLMs on-prem, uh, especially when you talk with large scale corporates because they have uh, sensitive information. And especially when it comes to uh, the healthcare industry, there are many compliances uh, requirements, uh, especially uh, in this sort of scenario. And fourth thing is a complex workforce, right? So you know that uh, when it comes to maintaining large language models, as well as these sort of systems, there are there's a requirement for complex workloads actually. See, for an example, uh, let's say a production ready LLM is rarely single, right? It's an isolated component actually. So when it comes to pre-processing, post-processing and model chaining, there can be complex number of workflows that are involved. So there has to be a proper unified solution uh, to inference. So that's why we have gone for Kubeflow as a proper solution uh, to deal with this. So when talking about, uh, the business impact, right? For an example, if we talk about the business impact when it comes to the complex workforce, right? We know that there's a high engineering overhead, right? So building and maintaining this custom multi-step pipeline is very significant and it's challenging as well. So that's why it requires a very huge um, engineering effort. And also uh, it requires, uh, you know, you know, the system can be very complex. So, and that has to support very sort of custom level of pipelines as well. Sometimes these pipelines can be very fragile also. So we had to make systems that are robust and that addresses all of these challenges basically. So that involves all the technical challenges as well as the business challenges as well. So uh, yeah, that's not number one. So uh, talking about our case study. So like I said before, um, we are, uh, I'm into uh, customer support automation space. 
and we are utilizing a uh, large language model such as Jima. And sometimes we go with Llama as well uh, as, as open source large language models when it comes to on-prem deployment. So we have uh, two se segments of customers. We are the customers are preferring to go with open uh, cloud deployed versions as well. And there, and there are some customers who prefer to be uh, to deploy their large language model, their open source large language models on-prem servers. Right, so um, point number two, as you can see, uh, when it comes to these sort of large corporates, they have uh, some sort of strict privacy rules. So, so for an example, like I mentioned earlier, right? When it comes to the medical companies, they have a lot of compliances, HIPAA compliance and GDPR, right? So we had to adhere to all of these criteria and all of these guidelines to make sure that your data is secure and you deliver the optimal solution. So that's point number two. Point number three, the technical challenge, right? So in our solution, in our case, we are dealing with multiple customers and that has to support multi-density, right? And then uh, in the same time, it has to be cost-effective as well, right? Because you know that if you go for a cloud-based model, it's pretty cheap. But if you go for this sort of approach, it can be very costly as well. But in terms of some other aspects, for an example, privacy, it caters better. Right? So we had to deal with all of these business cases. So that's why uh, we came up with this solution with this optimal architecture on where we, um, how we can inference these sort of LLMs on Kubernetes uh, with Kubeflow. Right. So, Chamut, uh, over to you. Right. So the foundation, the Kubernetes uh, on Google Cloud. Okay, so in this case study, our entire solution is uh, built top on Kubernetes. That's the industry in the standard contain orchestration. So we are running it on the uh, uh, Google Kubernetes engine, which is uh, manage production gate environment that handle the control plane for us. So no, we don't need to worry about the handling the control plane. So this gives us the portability and avoid the vendor lock-in. So we can run the same infrastructure on premises and across the clouds. So with the declarative workloads, so we can even use uh, uh, GitOps and so we can uh, speed up the reproduce the environment. So for the scalability, uh, we leverage in the pod resizing uh, core services uh, with the help of uh, uh, in-place uh, uh, pod resizing, uh, which is uh, recently released with Kubernetes 1.33. Uh, and KEDA for uh, even driven scaling for uh, non inference uh, services. So, uh, like a data prep for schedulers. So, and GK also support the native GPU management. So, letting us uh, allocate uh, GPUs as ECD, as uh, CPU, and memory. So, finally, uh, it's a part of the rich cloud native ecosystem, as you all know. Uh, cloud native ecosystem has a lot of uh, projects. So in uh, in our uh, uh, case study, we have integrated uh, with uh, several tools to uh, cover this up. So uh, let's move into uh, case serve. Next slide, please. Yeah. So in in case serve, uh, it's provide the standardized and serverless uh, inference platform on Kubernetes. So it's actually simplify. Uh, the model providing a single inter-service inter uh, inference custom resource. So K-Service is our chosen model uh, serving platform. So it's run natively on uh, uh, k and provide the standardized and serverless uh, inference layer. So it's all start with a single custom resource called inference service, which is simplifies the deployment and make operation uh, consistent across the uh, models and the teams. So, so, so let me highlight the, some of the key features uh, that include the uh, standardized protocol. So KSO gives uh, consistent REST or gRPC API. So no matter model we are, uh, so that doesn't matter what's the model we are serving. And the second, it supports serverless scaling. Uh, so as I said earlier. So third, we use uh, canary rollout and traffic splitting to safely deploy new models versions. So gradually shifting traffic to uh, avoid any downtimes. So finally, uh, KSO support uh, plug uh, pluggable transfer transformers. So which let us easily plug in uh, custom, uh, custom pre and pro pre and post processing logics. So perfect for uh, business use, ca use cases. So over to you Suresh. 
Yeah, thanks, Kamal, for that. Right, so this is basically a sample um, YAML configuration file uh, for a uh, for a deployment on Kser, this is actually a Gemma model sample actually. So this is how you can see, right? So the resource allocation can be very easily done here. As you can see, the limits can be set as well as the model storage can be set and uh, the spec can be defined right here as a um, YAML configuration. This is how you can uh, easily define that sort of a configuration. So also, uh, I had to specially mention that, okay, Kser provides the robust control plane for model serving. So as you can see, uh, we can simply expand the model controllability as well uh, with the inbuilt uh, the control plane of Kubernetes. So that is advantage uh, with um, uh, with the case of and the sort of configurations. Right. So the most important part, right? So serving layer number two. So we talked about okay, uh, case uh, utilizing case of uh, inference these sort of elements, but on top of case, uh, we have an additional layer, which is the VLM layer. So as you know, uh, VLM is uh, specialized in terms of serving uh, large language models. So basically what we do is on top of case, uh, we use VLM uh, to optimize this actually. So as you can see uh, in the in the diagram, in the chart we have displayed over here, point number one, uh, our high performance strategy. So I'll talk about the high performance strategy that we maintain. Okay. So, we are achieving the maximum performance for our large language models by embedding the VLM engine for this actually. And then uh, in terms of the memory management, so as you know, uh, when it comes to GPU memory, memory, there are certain issues. For an example, um, you know, there's this issue with the key value key value cache actually. So um, if you go with some sort of a VLM based one, we can eliminate that uh, memory management issue. So uh, as you can see in traditional serving, uh, it weighs on around 60 to 80% of key value cache memory. And then with VLM, we can eliminate that completely. Uh, and as well as uh, in terms of uh, the, um, you know, in VLM introduces groundbreaking innovation called page retention. So basically it clearly, man it clear clearly manages the key, key value pair cache by treating the GPU as a virtual memory in the operating system. So uh, that's using the concept of pages to store the information. And also uh, talking about the 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 batches wise, okay. So as you can see, if you go in traditional serving approach, it consumes um, it takes very low GPU utilization. But here uh, we are going for a very high throughput uh, optimization uh, with the page attention model, basically. So as you can see, this is why uh, it's really necessary uh, for us to serve VLM on top of KSR. So that would actually uh, improve the performance of the LLM. And um, so finally, uh, I'll talk about some of the pipelines that we're using. So basically, like I said before, uh, there are a lot of challenges that we're meeting when it comes to serving these sort of models, right? So something that is to mention is that uh, we should always think about the pipeline um, for inferencing. So example number one, uh, batch inferences. So uh, for a company like us, uh, we need to set up this sort of a um, you know, we are working with large sort of conversational data, right? So there has to be sentimental analysis done uh, throughout the whole day. So sometimes we had to, you know, read all of these conversations and sometimes you had to do insightful uh, anal anal analysis of all sort of information automatically, right? So in, the order of, in, in these sort of scenarios, right, we always do batch inferencing. So what it does is basically it will go through all of the conversations and all of the conversations and data of the customers uh, in an anonymous way and uh, we can set these sort of batch inferencing process as well and including the data preprocessing. So when it comes to uh, fine tuning these sort of models, I think there are some sessions at the end of this program as well on fine tuning, but I'll just give a small overview of what we are doing. So like I said, we are mostly depending on the Gemma model and also we use the Lama 3 model. So what we do is before we go for the preprocessing approach, we had to fine tune the large language model, right? So these sort of uh, fine tuning jobs and fine tuning pipelines can be configured. Uh, this is something that we do right now to make sure that the data is properly fine tuned and we can get the um, optimal result as well. And also, uh, we had to make sure that the model is properly serving on demand. So we had to make sure that uh, the model is properly being evaluated as well as the uh, performance is properly being monitored. So on those sort of metrics needs to be all, always covered uh, when, when it comes to these sort of pipelines. So we use the standard um, monitoring protocols, monitoring mechanisms to make sure that the model is properly um, deployed 
and it's performing at, at its best rate uh, on the cloud. Right, so the key takeaways are uh, our foundation is totally on Kubernetes because we are mostly focusing on the scalability aspect. Number two, uh, decouple the control plane uh, from the data plane. I think Chamath has already explained that. And then uh, scale on what matters, right? So for event driven architecture, we are using KEDA for auto scaling uh, for non referencing services. And also at the end, uh, automate everything. So with the pipeline support, uh, we are going to automate a lot of processes, including fine tuning, um, you know, batch processing jobs and sentiment analysis and many other aspects of uh, data processing aspects, right? And then the final point, right? The most important point is that the privacy aspect, what we are addressing here is the privacy, uh, because at the end of the day, we have to make sure that we are meeting the client's requirements as well as we are maintaining the proper privacy, because that is a main, one of the main reasons why clients are recommending us to go with uh, this sort of uh, open source model. So we respect that. And uh, yeah, and yeah, thanks a lot for having us. And shoot your questions if there's anything you can uh, reach out to us on social media as well. Thanks, thanks a lot. Yeah, it looks like there are a few questions. Um, if you want to hit the Q and A tab, sure. All right. All right. Okay. I can see the questions. What will be the benefits using Kubeflow for LLM inference instead of VLAN directory? Right. Okay. So um, I think I already addressed that question during my um, uh, during my presentation, actually. So uh, yeah, answered live. No? Sorry. I think uh, it's already marked as answered, I guess. Well, I mean, go ahead and give a quick summary, or if you want to quickly pull up the slide. I think she just marked that it was answered live because you're answering it. Sure. All right. Okay. Got it. So, uh, like I said, okay, um, VLM uh, is so right now, uh, the biggest focus has to be on the scalability aspect. So, the main reason why we are going with Qflow along with the additional VLM layer is that to maintain the model is scalable. So I think um, that is the main that is, that is the main reason why we are straight away uh, why we are um, working with Kubeflow here, and we have to make sure that pipelines are also incorporated with this, uh, because Kubeflow provides you a whole 360 platform for us to uh, incorporate the pipelines and as well as look at as well as to look at the scalability aspect of these models. So that's the main reason why we are straight away uh, we are using VLM as additional layer, but it's not a separate thing. We're using it as an additional layer uh, in inferencing. All right. So we have another question. Uh, requesting GPUs is different to CPU request. All right. You can directly request half a GPU, right? Okay. With multi instance GPU, you are able to request parts of GPUs, but then request in a slightly different way in Kubernetes. Therefore, my question. Yes, you are correct. So I think uh, in the configuration file I showed you, okay, the the GPU has to be pre-requested actually, right? So basically what I meant by that, that is, uh, it's not like a CPU request. Right? CPUs can be allocated, but you have to dedicate a GPU uh, in this sort of request basically. So uh, in the specification file, you can define the resource limits uh, that needs to be scaled up and down, but depending on GPU allocation that is allocated for your, uh, for your cluster, uh, it works basically. So you have to define the resource limits as well as uh, the configuration has to be defined, uh, but it's always within the boundaries of the platform and the boundaries within the quotas, which is there for GPUs. Maybe Chamut can add something to this as well. I think you answered the question, Suresh. Sure, sure. Any more questions? It looks like we actually need to move on to our next session.